Hagane is a woman who would rather use actions than words, a specialist in the undead, or I guess I could say someone who makes the undead suffer a second death. And so this is who we shall discuss today. If you find yourself entertained at any point during the video, then consider liking, subscribing and ringing that bell, as I cannot explain to you how much just a small action can do for this channel. If you want to support this channel even further, then perhaps check out my Patreon. Anyway, on with the video. The name Kagane is one that is very fitting for our favourite hot-headed Onyomoji, as it literally means Stitcher slash Sower of Shadows. This firstly references her Shikigami Ononoke, who is basically a zombie for all intents and purposes, one who was sewn together from the shadows. But Stitcher may also reference how she fights the undead. Stitching is generally something you do to heal someone, however what heals normal people usually hurts the undead and vice versa. So her methods hurt the undead not heal them, which would reflect her own opinion that the undead are natural, fake, and not fit to live in this world. And her given name, Yotsuru, translates to cosine, which is a part of a big bit of wordplay associated with Ononoke. Basically, Ononoke's given name Yotsugi means cotangent, and Tadatsuru's means sine. And the wordplay here is that cotangent equals cosine divided by sine, so in this equation cosine is on top and sine is below. So if you substitute these for the corresponding characters, you get Kagane's name on top of Tadatsuru's, referencing how she won Ononoke coming out on top, since Ononoke chose her over him. Kagane represents the idea of absolute justice, or more accurately, the belief in absolute justice. She indacts what she calls justice, a very prevalent theme throughout all of Nisimonogatari. As in her eyes, undead oddities have no place in the world of the living, and so need to be crushed. As she sees the world in absolutes, to her those things that are unnatural such as the walking dead are evil, there is no wriggle room in her mind, there is no grey. She views things as absolute and then dishes out justice in the name of this. Take her decision to exterminate Skihi. There is no misunderstanding on her part about what Skihi is. She is aware that Skihi doesn't know she is an oddity, she is aware she is not causing harm to anyone and probably never will. She is aware that she is effectively just Aragi's younger sister, that she is about as human as any oddity could be. However, none of that matters because she is an oddity, and so she is evil. And it's only natural that evil is vanquished. That is justice. Kagane is a very frightening antagonist within Nisi Monogatari, as she isn't someone who is just missing facts or is misinformed. No amount of words can change her mind, as she is well aware of the situation and has reacted in the only way she knows how. I will explain her foiling with her fellow specialists in detail in a bit, but I want to just draw your attention to the parallel between the final confrontations of Karen B and Skihi Phoenix. Kaiki is driven away by just words and Kagane had to be shown actions. Kaiki after all sees the world as one with no absolutes, where nothing is right and so you can never understand the full picture, just what you care to give your time to, and as such he can be reasoned with and asked to leave. Kagane though sees the world as one of absolutes, where justice crushes evil, and so only actions could speak to her, one who gets things done with actions, not words. He doesn't get Kagane to change her view on Skihi, because the Shijinatori will always be just an oddity and evil to be crushed. However, Araki manages to convince her not to act on her justice. In this confrontation between the two, the idea of forcing ideals on people is brought up, which is quite interesting in relation to Kagane, as although you could say she is forcing ideals, her notion of justice onto people, since she believes her justice to be true justice in her mind, then her ideals are always right. Or another interesting way to look at it is that she is not forcing her ideals on anyone, she is just acting on them and anyone who opposes her is stepping towards her ideals of their own volition. In that line of thinking, she never forces her ideals on anyone, she just acts without concern for any other opinions, and is that not the essence of a true unbending absolute justice? However, in this confrontation, Araki never challenges Kagane's justice, he instead agrees of it. He accepts that his sister is evil, that being a fake and a monster is evil, and then resolves to take all that evil onto himself. Because like how she believes there is a way life should be lived, he believes there is a way family should be. It took a bloody brawl for Aragi to finally get his point across to Kakane. He showed her that his ideals aren't so flimsy that they can be beaten out of him. His love for his sister is as absolute as her views on justice. This is why I believe she left willingly after their exchange, even after beating him to an inch of his life, because even at this point his views did not change, they are absolute. She views Aragi as a human, not a monster, something really nailed home in Tsukimonogatari, and so after he proves to her his ideals are not just talk, she has no choice but to listen to him and then decides to leave his sister alone. But still, I must stress he doesn't change her views on justice and his sister, because of Kagane's opinion, her justice, cannot be changed, and this is because of her belief in universal absolutism. She believes there is an objective right and wrong, that life has to be lived a certain way, 
Basically, there is a true and authentic way to live life, one that leads to fulfillment without regrets. It is the natural and proper way of life, and as such is the real thing, the real way of life. However, if there is a right way to live, then that means that everything outside of that path is wrong. She rejects and destroys those things that she sees as contradictory to the correct path in life, the reality of the world. Oddities are not natural and are not proper, so in her eyes they become unnatural and improper. Undead especially are the gravest insult as they oppose the simple cycle of life and death. They reject the correct path of life that universal absolutism states there is. Oddities are not real, they are fakes, and so they must be destroyed. This is the mindset Kagale conforms to and is the reason that she can never change her view on oddities, because to call them anything other than fakes would be in an abject rejection of the world itself. Kagane, like all the members of the Occult Research Club, is cursed. For rejecting the normal way of life and resurrecting the dead, all five members were cursed. She and Tadatsuru worked on the legs of Anoloke and so had their own legs cursed. They can never walk on the ground again because they dared to let the dead walk on the earth again. By letting Ononoke walk on the earth, they forfeited their own abilities to ever take another step on it again. And although this may just be my speculation, I think this curse is a big part of why Kagane believes so strongly in universal absolutism. She was punished for interfering with the natural way of life. She was cursed for rejecting death and bringing Ononoke back to life. Perhaps she is bitter for being cursed and especially hates the undead for being the cause of it, or more likely in my opinion, this curse serves to her as solid proof that there is a greater purpose to life, that there is such a thing as right and wrong. She was punished for being wrong, and so she now knows of 100% certainty that the undead and bringing the dead back to life is wrong. Something cursed her, something dictated to her what was right and wrong, and that is now her eternal view of justice, one she will follow for the rest of her life. She may never take another step again, but she can throw many more fists, all in the name of justice. The three specialists, Oshino Meme, Kaiki Deshu, and Kagane Yozura, all reflect a different worldview. And the best way to explain this differing of opinion is to turn to the question, what is worth more, a fake or the real thing? Kaiki would say the fake, Kagane would say the real thing, and Oshino would say they both have equal value. Or to apply this to the story directly, Kaiki would see Skihi as Araki's sister, Kagane would see her as a monster, and Oshino would see her as an oddity that is of equal worth to a real sister. Basically, she is essentially the real thing, so what's the problem? Oshino has always acts as a middle ground, and so Kaiki and Kagane represent the extremes. One is a manipulative con man, the other a straightforward hero of justice. As such, they place value in different things, Kaiki in money and Kagane in justice. But the reason for this difference comes down to the simple concept of absolutes. Kaiki believes there are no absolutes, no actions are right or wrong as there is no absolute and definitive definition of justice. He has no issue conning literal children because there is no objective justice that says he cannot. And Kagane on the other hand believes in an absolute justice which cannot be challenged. She exterminates evil because that is justice. Both of them spend these monogatari harassing children. Kaiki cons middle schoolers and Kagane tries to murder one. However, neither would say what they were doing is wrong because it aligns with their personal definitions of justice that justice doesn't exist, and that justice is absolute. Both work as brilliant foils for Aragi in the Simonogatari as they expose not the true nature of justice, but the true nature of what Aragi considers justice. Aragi condemns Karen for pursuing justice because she lacks the strength to do so. He believes justice should only be practiced by those with the power to do so, yet he resists Kagane's justice even when her power to enact it is stronger than his. He calls Kaiki evil, sees him as an archetypal villain, because he personally views him as absolute evil. Yet when Kagane is literally trying to kill his sister, his view of her is never as filled with hatred as it is when he looks at Kaiki. As Kagane says himself, in their fight, he wasn't really into it. These two both explore the natures of fakes and of justice, the two greatest themes of Nisei Monogatari. And although I'd love to go deeper, this is meant to be a Kagane video, so I will save these topics for some specific analysis videos on the ideas of justice and fakes in Monogatari. Kagane is a flawed character, like everyone else in this collection of stories. She has an absolute ideal of justice that she will never bend. She showcases to me the importance of ideals and also the nature of justice. She is brutally honest about her view of fakes and of the evil she insists must be exterminated, but she never forces her ideals on people, she just acts on them and if people get in the way, then what choice does she have than to kill them nice and proper? Comment of the week comes from Kumagama Sogi and Ajamu Najami, and I definitely agree, he certainly is interesting. If you're interested in my literary endeavours, then why not check out my books Gang Fluid Justice and People of Fate Volume 1, available at Amazon.com. And if you want to go the extra mile in supporting this channel, then consider pledging to my Patreon, where for as little as £2.75 a month, 
You can get your name at the end of the video, like Hikari Desu, 7SO, Rinjak 9696 and Dewey. So with all that said and done, I've been Seth the Sin, the Deadly Sin of Geek and I'm signing out. Stay safe everyone.